just short distance from here, there was a gas station on the freeway called Shell. It was a Shell station with the tallest sign ever made. The S burned out, so it at night would announce hell. And you can just feel it. You come over the, and you just feel this aboding darkness. So I really didn't know about the history of Oroville. I didn't know the drug problems and the poverty. I just knew I don't want to live in a place that feels like that. When we came here, we, we, were, we were shocked at the um, low income, the desperation of, of the society. When we pulled in the south side, we're like, oh my gosh, my kids were little and I was very, I had a little bit of fear because there's drive-by shootings, you know, right there. And, and, and I've never seen anything like that. The, just the, again, the desperation, the way people lived, I couldn't believe people lived like that. It was filthy. There were prostitutes in the street waiting for you to stop and talk to them. There were drug deals out in the open. There had no way you could get the police to come in there. It was horrifying. And that's where the Lord wanted us to plant the Father's house. When I asked the Lord why he told me to move here, he said, I want to speak to the world from Oroville, and I want you to be part of that. The Lord showed me the Father's house. He gave me the name, showed me what it would be. I immediately went and started looking for the fancy building to rent. I was going full on. When he stopped me and, and showed me Southside, the neighborhood Southside, we ended up in an old firehouse that we rented for $5 a month. Things completely changed on us and we went baby step by baby step, just going forward, letting the Lord show us what he wanted to do. We go to the riverbanks and we feed the homeless three times a week. Every Friday, we serve yearly 27,000 people. We give out food baskets just out of our back door. We started uh, Adopt-A-Block. We started a recovery that? program for drug and alcohol addiction. Most of those people come from Butte County Jail. Businesses are helping hands, Yeovil Yogurts, Restored, the Lord's Gym. And these businesses are to help all of these people learn how to live in the world. Yeah work in the world, but mostly give their life away. Through our company, we've renovated or built over 100 houses in Southside. What's happening now is that people are actually taking pride in their houses. It's just a different, it's a different, different place, a thousand percent. Looking back, if he had told us where we were going, we probably would have said, heck no. That would have been scary. And just little by little, we had no idea that we'd be doing what we're doing in, in the addiction ministry and the homeless and all that. Well, the streets are clean. There's not piles of garbage anywhere. There are no abandoned cars anymore. There are no prostitutes, really. That's a really rare thing for a prostitute to stand on the corner. The police presence is consistent Huge. and constant. You can go you can go find them in the neighborhood every day. All the churches in Southside seem to be flourishing. We want to make it impossible to get to hell from Orville. This place is a place of beauty and treasure, and the treasure is in the people. The Father's House is built on people who've just not been loved. And if you come to the Father's house, you'll see many people who once didn't love themselves. And they're just treasures, they're precious. So um, we're really working to make it a hell-free zone in <laughs> Oroville, right? As much as Oroville's changed in 20 years, can you imagine if it just keeps going? It is a dream place to live now. It is a wonderful place to live. And I think that's just a real miracle. And I think one of the reasons the town feels so different, looks so different, is so different,